أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أليس الله بكاف عبده ويخوفونك بالذين من دونه ومن يضلل الله فما له من هاد ومن يهدي الله فما له من مضل أليس الله بعزيز ذي انتقام ولئن سألتهم من خلق السماوات والأرض ليقولن الله قل أفرأيتم ما تدعون من دون الله إن أرادني الله بضر إن أرادني الله بضر هل هن كاشفات ضره أو أرادني برحمة هل هن ممسكات رحمتي قل حسبي الله عليه يتوكل المتوكلون صدق الله العظيم These are ayats from Surah Az-Zumar The ayah number 36, 37 and 38 we are about to complete the ayah number 36. The ayah starts with a question Allah Azza wa Jalla asked, Alaysa Allah bikafin abda, is not Allah sufficient for his servant? وَيُخَوِّفُونَكَ بِالَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ Yet they try to frighten you with those besides him. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلِ اللَّهُ But whomever Allah sends astray, فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَاد For him, there will be no guide. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَاد uh, At this, uh, with, with this end, we can understand from the ayah that the people whom are frightened by the idolaters, they are not excused because they understand the truth, but they choose the false way. It wasn't for them to frighten from the idols. It wasn't for them to accept uh, that frightening because they already have known that there is only uh, one God and He has all the power. Allah Azza wa Jal has given them the ability to understand that there is only one God. So whatever they try frighten you with their idols, whatever they frighten you with the deities other than Allah, it doesn't worth anything. It doesn't mean anything because there is no God, there is no any deity except Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no deity other than Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no Ilah, no Rabb, no Lord except Allah Azza wa Jal. And we know that there is no power لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله except with Allah Azza wa Jal. All the power comes from Allah and all the power is in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal. So no one can harm you. You should please Allah Azza wa Jal. You should uh, strive to please Allah Azza wa Jal. and you should know that all the power in his hand you do not need anyone other than Allah Azza wa Jal. if you pleased him then you are okay you will not need anyone uh, other than Allah Azza wa Jal. and therefore Allah Azza wa Jal started the ayah Alaysa Allah abda? isn't Allah sufficient for his servant you will not need anyone but if you uh, please someone by, while upsetting Allah Azza wa Jal, if you please anyone, whether your wife, whether your children, whether your boss, anyone while upsetting Allah Azza wa Jal, what they can give you? They do not have anything. Actually, they are servants like you. They cannot bring any favor they cannot bring any benefit to you 
they are all of them already in need of Allah Azza wa Jal. So we know that the only one God has all the power. He can provide for us whatever we need. So we should please Him. We sh our objective should be only pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal. And we should not upset Allah Azza wa Jal while pleasing someone else. Every time Allah Azza wa Jal should be at the first hand. He should be pleased. You can please Allah Azza wa Jal and you can upset all the people. You are, you will achieve. You will get achievement. You will be successful. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who can support you, who can help you, who can give you health, who can give you wealth and whatever you need. You should not take Allah Azza wa Jal to the second level and bring some anyone else into to the first level. Your priorities, you should be for Allah because you are His creature and you need Him while Allah Azza wa Jal does not need anything from His servants and all the people needs Him, need Allah Azza wa Jal. He is the one whom needed by everything, by everyone. He is a summit. Who is the, he is the one who provides for everything, for everyone, whatever they need. And everything cry out Him, call out Him, invoke Him. So, He is sufficient for us and we should Please Allah Azza wa Jal. We should not deny Him. We should have taqwa of Him. We should observe our duties for Allah Azza wa Jal. وَمَنْ يُضْلِ لِلَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَادِ وَيُخَوِّفُونَكَ بِالَّذِينَ مِنْ دُونِهِ And we should not fear anyone other than Allah Azza wa Jal. We should know that if all the people, entirely the nation, come together to cause a single harm for you, they will not be able to do that. So we, do, no, we should not fear uh, from false idols, from false deities, and we should know that there is only one God. Actually, we has the ability to realize this truth. Allah Azza wa has already given us look the Prophet Abraham was a small child and they frightened him with their idols he said how can I fear whatever you associate with Allah Azza wa how can I fear them while you are not fearing the only one God while you do not fear that you associated others in worship with Allah Azza wa Jal, with the only one God. Which one of us has more right to be secure? Which one of us deserve to be secure? In kuntum ta'lamun. If you do ilm, if you use your mind, you will understand that you are at risk. You are at very risk, at very big risk. You are in dangerous situation. You are associating others with the only one God. This is the biggest crime. Ya Bunayya la tushrik billah inna shirka ladun munadim. Luqman said to his son, do not associate anyone with Allah Azza wa Jal because associating Others with him, with Allah Azza wa Jal, is the biggest dhulm, biggest unjust, biggest oppress. You cannot think uh, 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 such an uh, oppress bigger than this one. La tushrik billah. You are making shirk, you are doing, associating others with Allah, and you do not fear, and at the same time demanding from me, to fear your idols, 
to fear your deities. At that time, Abraham والسلام, our father was a small child. We heard a boy, we heard a boy mentioning our idols. Ibrahim named Abraham. Ibrahim السلام, so the person, the human entity, has the ability to realize, to understand the truth. To understand that there is only one God. To acknowledge, to, uh, to acknowledge the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal. So he should not be feared by anyone else after he had realized the truth, after he had understand the, tr understand the truth. He should sacrifice. This is the imtihan of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the test of Allah Azza wa Jal. After you realizing the truth, Allah Azza wa Jal brings many uh, things before you in order to test you. Woman And whomever Allah sends astray. There is no guide for him. فَمَالَهُ مِنْ had. We said that with this ayah we understand that the choice in the hand of the man, even if he frightened, if, even if he's scared by the idolaters, he should not be scared of them after he realized the truth. But if you think that some people will uh, be at that situation, will be not make their choice uh, in re reality and they will uh, think that they, uh, the idols may cause harm to them and worship the idols and do not accept the truth at that situation they would not able to understand the truth very much no do not think that everything is clear if there is people choosing worship the idols the, and uh, going after the idolaters that's their choice and because of their choice Allah uh, uh, Allah sends them astray because they, they should be sacrificed they should resist for uh, against the falsehood they should convey the message they should accept the message but there is a limit if they are frightened, comes uh, to the level, to the extent that they want to kill you, there is uh, some excuse for them. But we should know that the people, the human entity, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal made for them the truth clear in order to make their, cho their uh, choice uh, with free will. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلِ اللَّهُ and Allah Azza wa Jal sends astray whom he deserves uh, that. And whom Allah Azza wa Jal sent astray فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ آت. For, uh, for him there is no guide. Let's move on to the ayah number 37. وَمَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ And this ayah actually is with the same meaning uh, with the ayah number 36. وَمَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ But with the opposite, opposite side. وَمَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ And whom Allah guide. وَمَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ You understand that the, guide, the guidance is only in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَمَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ مُضُولٍ No one can mislead him. For him there is no any misleader. وَمَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ مُضُولٍ and you should ask whom Allah Azza wa Jal guide. We know the answer. Allah Azza wa Jal guides the one who deserves to be guided. Because in Quran Kareem Allah Azza wa Jal has given many examples for them. And after them, Allah Azza wa Jal instructed us that Allah, those are the ones Allah Azza wa Jal guided them. So go after them. Do the same if you want to be guided. 
Allah Azza wa Jal explained the people whom He guides. If you want to be one of those uh, whom He guided, so do the same and learn whom they are. So the hidayah in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal and He guide the one who deserve to be guided. This is the justice of Allah Azza wa Jal. The hidayah and the dalala, the guidance and misguidance is in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal. Both of them. فَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ مُضِيلٍ And if Allah Azza wa Jal guided someone, it means that he deserved to be guided, no one can mislead him. مَا لَهُ مِنْ مُضِيلٍ No one can mislead him. Even if he try to frighten him or to confuse his mind, whatever he tries, it doesn't uh, mean anything. It doesn't make sense. He will not be successful if the person amongst those whom Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to be guide him, amongst those who deserve to be guided. وَمَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ So there will, no, there will be any mistake, there will be no any mistake in the world from the beginning to till the end. The hidayah, the guidance and misguidance will reach exactly the person who deserve it. There will no there will not any mistake in this. The people who deserve the hidayah will receive the guidance and the people who deserve to be misguided, they will receive the misguidance. Allah Azza wa Jal will draw them to the misguidance. And Allah Azza wa Jal do all of this according to the choice of the people. So there is a real and uh, uh, a big uh, uh, justice. وَمَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ and whom Allah Azza wa Jal guides فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ مُضِلْ Then for him there is no any misleader. No one can mislead him. Whether the situation or whether the people who has a good speech or anyone, any kind of thing. No one, nothing can mislead him if Allah guided him. So be careful in your life and be amongst those who deserve the hidayah, deserve the guidance. Then be confident Allah will uh, guide you. Be comfort Allah will guide you. And no one can cause harm to you. وَمَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ مُضِلٍ Such no one can uh, bring benefit to you. The same. Both of them. بِيَدِهِ الْخَيْرُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Both of them in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal. And He gives one of them to whom who deserve that thing. This is the justice of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَمَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ مُضِلٍ At this point, Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking a new question. أَلَيْسَ And this question also comes with the same form. أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ We remember this form with the ayah 36. It began with that form. أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ And the same question here. أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ But this one, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Bi'azizan, isn't Allah Almighty? At 36 he said, isn't Allah sufficient? And now he's asking, isn't Allah Almighty? Vintiqam, possessor of retribution. Isn't Allah Almighty, possessor of retribution? It means that whoever relies on him and turns to him, will never be forsaken for he is the Almighty who cannot be overwhelmed by another Allah Azza wa Jal Al-Aziz who cannot be overwhelmed by another he do whatever he want Inna Rabbaka fa'alun lima yurid no one can prevent Allah Azza wa Jal so he when he say I'm the one who guide and uh, whenever I guide 
No one can mislead him. And I am the one who mislead. And when I mislead, no one can guide him. You should not think any exception. You should not consider that someone can able to guide. No, this is in the hand of Allah. No one can take that right, that attribute from Allah Azawajal. Because he is Al-Aziz. No one can overwhelm Allah Azawajal. Alaysa Allahu bi Azizin. He is saying this and he is doing this. And no one, there is no one can prevent him. Allah is Al-Aziz, Almighty. And a new attribute, Dintiqam, possessor of retribution. Possessor of retribution. It means that Allah Azza wa Jal will punish some people for their sins, will punish some people who claim that they can give, they can bring Hidayah. Who claimed that Allah Azza wa Jal gave him a portion from Hidayah to, for, for to give the people. And Allah Azza wa Jal will punish those who understand, who realize the truth and didn't go after them, choose the wrong way, didn't give the Hidayah its value, denied it. Allah Azza wa Jal will punish them. He is Duntiqam. If you deny him, if you deny the truth, Allah Azza wa Jal will retribute, will exact retribute on you. No and, and and at that day no one can swear more than him in exacting retribution and those who disbelieve in him and associate others with him and resist to the messenger. Alaysa Allahu bi aziz and intiqam. Isn't Allah al aziz? This is one of the name of Allah Azza wa Jal, al aziz. And this is the define, the definition of God, who, who has all the power and no one can prevent him from doing anything. Al aziz. No one can go opposite to him. No one can prevent him and no one can say any, anything after him. Who has all the power and who act in whatever he want, Al-Aziz, and do and does whatever he say, alayhi Allah. So you should not think any exception in the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. When he says that he has the power, he has the guidance, and he is the one who guide whomever deserve to be guided and misguide whomever deserve to be misguided. You cannot think other way. You cannot give this position or some portion from this position to anyone. You should know that the guidance in Allah is in the hand of Allah. So you should please him only. You should please him. You should not please some people else in order to be guided. You should please Allah Azza wa Jal only. Because the Hidayah, you will receive that Hidayah from Allah Azza wa Jal. And no one can change this rule. This is the rule of Allah Azza wa Jal. Why no one can change him? Because the power of Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't lessen, doesn't decrease. And he has all the power because he is Al-Aziz who cannot be overwhelmed by another. Alayhi Allahu bi Azizin, the Intiqam, possessor of retribution. This is the names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Maybe some people will ask that, how can God, possessor of retribution, how can Allah Azizun how Allah Azza wa Jal punish? At some episode, we uh, discussed about uh, discussed this issue, and we, we said that Allah Azza wa Jal punish. Yes, you should not think Allah Azza wa Jal purely a God uh, who forgive whatever his forgive all the sins. 
does not anger to anyone. You should not think him in this way. If there is an injustice, if there is an oppressor, Allah Azza wa punish them because he is Al Adl, he is the just. Allah Azza wa does everything according justice. He has justice. So he should punish some people. And so Allah Azza wa Jal, possessor of retribution, he will take your right from the oppressor and give it to you. We read at uh, the ayah number 31 that all the people will dispute before Allah Azza wa Jal. And we, we learned there that the people will take their right back. The oppressed one will take his right from the oppressor. The weak one will take his right from the ignorant one. All the people will dispute at that day before Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal will judge between them. And He will punish those who oppressed. And this is the justice. If you think about the justice, you can understand the uh, name of Allah Azza wa Jal, the attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. Let's move on to the ayah number 38. And if you ask them, من خلق السماوات والأرض? Who created the heavens and the earth? This is a basic question. We can ask the same question today. Whenever we see, whenever we encounter someone who claim to be a god or a thing claim to be a god we can ask the same question who created the heavens and the earth Allah Azzawajal giving an example in this ayah if you ask the idolaters of Quraysh the idolaters of Quraysh and that day in Arabia Peninsula, if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth, despite they were worshipping the idols, they would say, Allah says, La certainly they would say, Allah, the only one God, He created the heavens and the earth. They admit that Allah is the sole creator. Allah. They know that their idols, incapable, cannot create anything. Even they cannot move, they cannot speak, they do not have any ability. The children can also realize this reality. The idols cannot move, they cannot do anything, they cannot harm you, they cannot bring you any benefit. A new question, did they create the heavens and the earth? They couldn't say our idols created the heavens and the earth. And either they couldn't say our idols created the heavens and the earth with Allah Azza wa Jal. They cooperated with Allah Azza wa Jal and created the heavens and the earth. They, didn't, they couldn't say this also because they do, know, they do know that these are only rocks these are only creatures. They are not gods. They do know. And with this question, it comes up here. You can see that they do believe that the only one God created everything. And this same question should be asked everyone, to everyone who created the heavens and the earth. There is some people, I do know, that they say that the heavens and the earth didn't create it. They're, they, they're, they were like this. How it can be? Then who created you? You were like this? Are you everlasting? But you know your birthday. There should be a power created you and shaped you 
in your mother's womb, who created you? You are not a simple thing to be shaped itself. There should be a power created you. We are the Muslims. We believe in the one who created us. We believe in the one who created the heavens and the earth. We believe in the one who will make us die. And we know him through his actions. He is the God. He is Al-Aziz, has all the power and cannot be overwhelmed by another. When we admit that the only one God created the heavens and the earth, we say that we will not worship anyone other than him. But the mushrikun of Quraysh, the idolaters of Quraysh, despite that they admit that Allah is the sole creator, they do uh, worship, they used to worship the idols. Why? They know the reality that the idols didn't create anything. How can they worship them? The answer is clear. They are not worshiping them. They are only playing with them in order to be free from the only one God. This is only their tools to free themselves from the only one God, to change their religion, to make a new religion with their gods, and to put an authority over the society and to manage them to administrate them. This is the tools of thulm. The same tools used by all the tyrannies, used by Namrud, used by Fir'aun. Even they didn't believe their, uh, to their claim, in their claims, but they used them. And the people didn't believe in them, by the, but they accepted them because some of them frightened it and some of them t uh, received their portion and they wanted to be free also from the only one God this is the way of kufr this is the way of denying Allah but the question here and it is clear it was explicit and today it is explicit and it should be answered if you, sh if you do not answer this question then you deny, first of all, yourself. And if you ask them, من خلق السماوات? Who created the heavens and the earth? الله, they would say, Allah, the only one God. قل, say to them at this point, أفرأيتم ما تدعون من دون الله? Then tell me, the things you invoke besides Allah Azza wa Jal. Do you see these things you invoke besides Allah Azza wa Jal? In aradani Allah bidurrin, if Allah Azza wa Jal intended some harm to me, in aradani Allah bidurrin, hal hunna kashifatu durrihi? Could they remove? the harm from me, the harm of Allah Azza wa Jal, could they remove it? If Allah Azza wa Jal intended a harm to me, could they remove that harm? This is a very clear question. After they responded that there is only one creator who created the heavens and the earth, it's already clear how much he is powerful. And now the idols, before them. They cannot even move. And the question is also clear. If Allah Azza wa Jal intended some harm to me, could they remove that harm? In Aradani Allah Bidurrin Hal Hunna Kashfatudurri. The question is clear, no. They cannot remove that harm from you against the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal against the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. Aw aradani bi rahmah. And let's 
ask the question in the other way and on, on the other hand say to them if Allah intended a mercy to me could they withhold that mercy from me? Could they withhold the mercy of Allah Could they break the decree of Allah Could they prevent Allah from giving me such mercy? The answer is clear. They cannot. They cannot speak. They cannot move. But Allah, the only one God who created the heavens and the earth, it's clear how much He is powerful and it's clear how much they are and their idols are weak. So the question is clear. When someone comes to you and say to you, come to my idol, come to my deity, and worship him with Allah come to my Shaykh and believe that he has some portion from Allah he do something and he know the unseen he hear you and he can uh, bring you the benefit of Allah from the Allah he has some share from the decree of Allah say to him no if Allah intended some mercy to me does your Shaykh can your shaykh withhold Allah And if Allah wanted to cause harm to me, could your shaykh remove that harm from me? No, then it's nothing. He cannot do anything. He is like me. Let him worship Allah and let me worship Allah Let all of us worship the one who created all of us. Let not us worship each other. Islam and the way of the prophets, the way of the religion says, Qul hasbi Allah. Say, Allah is sufficient for me. I do not need your shaykh. I do not need your idol. I do not need your deities. I do not need anything or anyone. If I have Allah Azza Qul hasbi Allah. Say, Allah, the only one God, is sufficient for me. If He is not sufficient for you, then you can uh, seek another people. You can look for some people else. And you will explain to Allah how He couldn't be sufficient for you. He is sufficient for me. Till today, I saw that He can create everything. He can create everything and He has all the power. He is sufficient for me. If you want to ask them something, then ask Allah Azza wa Jal. If you want to say something, then say to Allah Azza wa Jal. He is the one who is sufficient for you. Alayhi yatawakkalul mutawakkilun. Then let the believers, let who want to put his trust, put his trust to Allah on Allah Azza wa Jal. Rely on Allah Azza wa Jal and believe in him. He will defend you in your life. He will be sufficient for you in your life and in the hereafter. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا. ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا. ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به. واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا عن القوم الكافرين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته